Hello. Hello everyone. Greg Ross's Rat Trapping Tips. 5th of October 2021. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've just come back from my morning check of a few of my traps at various customers in my community. And uh, here's what I got. Uh, a couple of black rats, young ones. That guy's about yeah, half grown, and that guy's just a little guy, he baby, maybe a third grown. So where I caught this one, I now know that in that neighborhood, within a few meters of where I caught this one, there's probably a nest, and I'm very probably going to catch between 3 and 12 more rats of this size and this color. And that's the way it works. And that's why traps are so good, because you get information from traps when you see the size of the rat you catch. Virtually every time I catch a rat this size or smaller, or maybe slightly bigger, I know from many, many experiences with them that I am going to catch between 3 and 12 more rats within a few meters of that trap. So what I do is I bring more traps in, and I clean them right out because they're not going to go anywhere far from that nest for until they get to at least that size, at least that size, maybe even bigger. And uh, they stick close to the nest while they're little, usually, unless you disturb the nest or rip it up. So that's this morning's catch. It's pouring with rain. I was going to go to a big uh, property and check under about five different buildings where I got a lot of traps. Uh, but it's too wet. I'm going to do that tomorrow. But in the meantime, today's catch, two rats. My customers are very happy. This rat was bothering a guy, and he phoned me last night, and I went around and set a trap in his cabin, and I, after studying the situation, I said, the trap should catch the rat tonight or tomorrow night. And sure enough, first night, it caught the rat. So I had to go there this morning because he doesn't want to deal with it. So I want to talk about um, the wad on... The bait plate. You see even these Victor professional bait plate traps. I, I still put the wad of cloth on there to soak up the peanut butter and it's a it's a game changer. It really increases your catch rate. And with these guys you can see the little wad of cloth is crimped into the bait plate there. And um, every now and then I have to replace the wad. So, because the rats have gradually chew it away and chew it away until there's no wad there at all. And uh, so every now and then you've got to replace the wad. And with the, these kind of traps where I fitted the bait cup to it, you got to do it from the back. So you get your cloth, and uh, in this case it's an old, old towel that a raccoon ripped up. So you cut it out, and then from behind the trap you push the wad in. You push the wad in to the empty bait plate under the tab, get it in position like that, out of the way from the back here, and then you crimp the tab closed like that. So you lift the tab up, you put your cloth in the back, you push it in under the tab with the screwdriver, and then you crimp it closed. And that's what you got to do every now and then with these traps to ensure that you get the maximum performance from them. Replace that because uh, every so often the rats will chew it down right down to nothing. It's quite interesting. Sometimes I'll come and I'll find a dead rat in the trap right after I've put a fresh pad in and the rat has managed to chew virtually all of the pad and it gets caught at the last little threads of the pad. It's maybe built up a bit of confidence or something and um, so it's tugging away on that last little remains of the wad, the cloth wad, just pulling and bang trap gets them and that's what it's designed to do that wad that wad is essential my I've always said the two golden rules of rat trapping are always have your bait secured to the plate with thread or in this case a wad rule number one rule number two always anchor your trap to something tie it or nail it or whatever otherwise they'll drag it off and you'll never know what you caught and it, it's just a loss of huge information a loss of your trap but there's actually hundreds of rules to rat trapping and in my videos I'm hoping to show you some. Okay, the other thing about the other good thing about traps I wanted to mention is the environmental reasons for using traps. Uh, a lot of my customers 
tell me they don't want me to use poison. Adamantly, they do not want me to use poison to get rid of their rats. I'll say, okay, I can do it with traps. Sometimes it's a bit more labor intensive, but a lot less risk with traps and a lot less environmentally uh, damaging, potentially. Although sometimes I do catch the odd bird in my trap. But if you do catch a bird, I know it's very upsetting. But look at it this way. This is a war we're fighting against rats. And in any war, there's going to be innocent victims, unfortunately. But look at it this way. For every bird, every rat you kill, for every rat you kill, you're saving 10 birds. So if you kill the odd bird, that means that the odd rat you kill saves only 9 birds. In the long run, you're saving one heck of a lot of birds' lives. Because rats love to eat birds' eggs, and they love to eat the young nestlings and the chicks, and even the adult birds sometimes. Native birds, domestic birds, chickens. So for every bird you accidentally kill, uh, you've probably saved a thousand bird lives. So it's a trade-off, like in any war. Okay, well that's it for this video. And, uh, whoops. Good trapping, folks. And remember my ebook. My ebook is titled The Rat Trapper's Handbook. You know, read that book and it will change your rat trapping success tremendously and positively and um, give you a whole new perspective on trapping rats. People who read that book tell me it, it made a huge difference to their rat trapping and they're now independent. They now can handle their own rat trapping. They don't need to get a pest controller to do it. So buy the book. It's only $10 from Amazon, The Rat Trapper's Handbook. Bye.